Supervisor Morris, and uh, we'll do a few introductions. I have Vice Chair to my right. Carl Fisher. <laughs> you remembered that. Uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. So I did. Right. And I'm just, I'm just biding my time here trying to come up with my answer. I'm John Fenley, District 5, Southern Trinity. Keith Groves, District 1. And Bill Burton, District 4, Trinity River. Great. Right. And uh, County Administrator of the Tyler County Council, Margaret Long, and our one and only Susie Hawkins. That keeps us, <laughs> our trains running on time. I don't do it, she does. Uh, Welcome, and um, I will have our county administrator, Wendy Tyler, start with uh, anything else you'd like to add that I didn't cover, and she'll handle the questions okay. uh, in the format process, so you won't have to deal with us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, so as the chair pointed out, we have a lot of half hour for each interview. Um, I have big questions to ask you um, that are rated questions. We've got a non-rated question as well. And then, of course, board members may be chiming in, as they sometimes like to do, with their own follow-up questions to the eight that we have established. Okay. So, <laughs> that's great. So, Patrick, can you give a concise description of your background and how it makes you qualified to be the clerk recorder assessor for Trinity County? Sure. Um, I started out uh, uh, as an entrepreneurial business person. I dropped out of college first time around um, at age 19, went into business for myself. Uh, sort of never looked back, uh, but I, I was ended up in the for t over 20 years in the finance lending business. Um, dealt with a lot of appraisals, uh, worked in supervisory uh, top, top executive management roles in several finance companies, uh, some of which were owned by myself and family members, others of which were working with other, other organizations, other people. Um, and in all of those processes, I've, I've done a lot of work with both appraisals, assessments, and, um, and, and I have a good understanding of administrative processes. So um, I made the decision in the late 90s to go back to school full time since I had dropped out as a kid. And so I've basically been a student for the last 12 years uh, with the addition of doing some short-term contract work, uh, both consulting in nonprofits and then also um, uh, doing some work with uh, interim management, if you will. I uh, just completed a, a role uh, managing a, uh, an educational organization that was restarting, uh, formed a new nonprofit, that sort of thing. So I've got a lot of administrative, uh, top-level management sort of background. Uh, and I also have a good understanding of finance and appraisals and budgets and those sorts of things from having been in the, the finance and lending industry for so many years. And I was licensed as a California real estate salesperson on two different occasions. Uh, was licensed as a commercial pro property broker and commercial finance lender, uh, both of which deal with uh, property, uh, you know, personal property, if you will, versus the real property side of it. And then during my uh, finance career, Predominantly, I was involved with securing uh, new startup businesses with, with real property. So we did a lot of work with appraisals and you know the different income approaches and you know market approaches and, and replacement cost approaches to, to appraisal and that sort of thing. So a lot of that has uh, made me, I think, interested, number one, and number two, um, qualified in a way that I, I could easily, I think, go through the process of uh, the Board of Equalization plus uh, uh, Los Rios College has a great property tax uh, program where you can get certified for it. Um, and again, it's all part of that standardization and making sure that all the counties are doing things correctly as far as the Board of Equalization overseeing it. So their website is very valuable in regards to the uh, both the assessor's manuals and the, the procedures and processes that it, that it has available there. So I'm, I'm excited about the fact that it's something that I can take both that experience plus my <coughs> education and, and roll it into to one opportunity like that so to, to be of service. Uh, I wanted, that's the whole reason why I went back to school was to be able to work for a government or a nonprofit in a way that could be of service <coughs> to folks. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Follow up? Yeah. 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 So where does the assessor get the authority to assess? Please tell us your understanding of the responsibilities of the assessor. Oh, sure. Um, well, first of all, to you know, prepare the assessment role, if you will, uh, of all the personal and real estate, real property, if you will, and, and 
also other types of property, the aircraft and vessels and the different, different things that are uh, taxable, if you will. And um, uh, the authority, I believe, comes under California law, but it's, uh, again, it's um, uh, in each county, uh, it's the assessor's responsibility to make sure that the assessment roll is correct and that the market valuations or the valuations for the taxable property are, are correct, if you will. Um, I also note that there were a lot of deficiencies in those areas over the last few years. Uh, the report that came out last year from the board um, showed 22 different things that they were concerned about here at the level uh, of the county, and I see that they're going to be coming back in to do um, uh, a sampling of assessed property uh, on the real property side because they didn't do that at their last uh, five-year uh, process that they go through. So, so that's coming up, and obviously they're going to be looking for a lot of their uh, recommendations, I think, to, be, to have been acted upon. And I, and I don't think that there's anything that they've said that I could see that couldn't be acted upon or required a, a great deal of money to, to be acted upon. So, uh, so I think I could make some significant changes in bringing us, us being Trinity County more in compliance with, uh, with the rest of California in regards to how property tax is assessed and, and, and charged to the citizens. So. I don't know if that totally answered what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving along. Hypothetically, you are the successful candidate, which includes overseeing elections. Okay. You were asked to moderate a debate between three candidates for an office. You believe one of your staff has leaked the questions to their favorite candidate before the debate. What are the legal, ethical, and professional ramifications, and how would you address each of those? Wow. Well, first of all, I, I don't. I, I think that would be a, obviously a, a, a breach and, a, and something you would not want um, to have occur within your staff. And, and there would be a process of, of being able to address that uh, from an administrative perspective. Um, um, I would think that all the candidates would have to equally be given uh, the the questions if, if one had been given the questions. Uh, so. It, when that was disclosed or the point at which that was found out um, would determine whether you could go ahead with that, with that public hearing, if you will, with the three different candidates and have them each have equal benefit of knowing the questions in advance and having a prepared answer. So uh, short of that, I would think you'd have to reschedule uh, the meeting almost uh, from, a, uh, from a perspective of of if, if nothing else, the equitable or, or the fairness of, of each candidate having having that equal time or equal opportunity. Okay. Uh, halfway through almost. <laughs> All department heads in Trinity County are working department heads responsible for various components of work over and above managing the functions that they oversee. Working in a small and busy office requires the ability to adapt to an ever-changing and often distracting environment. You will be required to move from task to task and at times unable to complete one job in order to deal with another matter. How do you manage competing priorities? Well, I've, I've always used a, a, the Franklin Covey system of, of time, time and project management, if you will. I've been formally trained in both of those on, on a couple of different occasions, but uh, where I basically prioritize you know, ABC, one, two, three, four, five, that sort of thing. Uh, um, and, uh, and and I actually thrive on the, the diversity of being able to have multiple tasks going at once. Not that it's, in my opinion, a good idea to try to multi multitask per se because you may not get one task done well, but uh, but certainly in a, in a setting, uh, in almost any administrative setting or a setting such as this, I would think there would be issues that would come up that would require prioritization or if you if you would call it putting out a fire or having something that's imper important that puts it to the top of the list. And it, it's really just a process of reprioritizing or, or to reset those priorities to where you, you take what's in your face and, and deal with it and there's no time like the present in being able to deal with someone who has an issue or a problem before it gets any worse, if you will. So. From that perspective, I, I think it's a matter of adjusting your time and then still maintaining, um, I don't want to say a sense of decorum, but a, 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 you know, having the emotional intelligence to be able to not let it bother you or, or have a, uh, because again, we are all in any organization, county level, 
whatever, it, everyone's in it to, to make a, a better functioning unit as a whole. So it, it's important to be able to help one another in those ways as much as possible. So, so I actually enjoy that. And I, I, I would enjoy serving on other community committees in addition to my work responsibilities. It's, it's the kind of thing that w without being in any area that would have a conflict of interest, but it's, uh, it's the kind of thing that I actually thrive on or enjoy doing. I'm, I'm, I'm good at that stuff, so. What is your vision of customer service, and how would you implement that vision? Well, um, I actually wrote a manual on customer service for um, a group over in the UK back in 2004, um, and up being a 30-page manual. And, and again, it was um, it was based upon uh, uh, you know how best to deal with the customer uh, from the standpoint of. I don't want to say a customer is always right, but that's the, the, the method that you have to come from. In other words, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt and not doubt that they're there to try to take advantage. Not, not that there aren't folks that might you know, try to do something that's out of the norm, but I think if, from a customer service perspective, um, you, have to, you, you have to deal with the public and satisfy them to the level of being able to at least have heard and understand their question. I'm not saying you always have to have the, the best answer they want or to be able to give in to, for instance, on a reassessment of a, a property, you might have a customer come in who's, oh, my property's not worth this amount of money, but it, so you have to take the time to be able to uh, understand without going into an, in an, into an emotional place with it, but trying to fully understand their side of it in order to and, and hopefully they'll bring proof as to why the values may be lower in, in, in that particular scenario. But you want to be able to, um, uh, to to first listen and fully understand before responding, and then be able to, to find appropriate uh, uh, solutions if, if, if they're possible. Um, um, or refer them to the correct place to, to get those answers or to get those solutions if it's not within your domain or within your pur purview to be able to, to do that. So, so basically, being able to first understand and being able to connect with people at the level to where they, they fully understand that, that you are listening and that you've heard them and being able to respond accordingly to, so that they understand that you were effective at, as a listener uh, and that you understand what the problem is. Uh, that, that's where a lot of the issues come in when people don't respond in that way or they think it's uh, an attack on their office or an attack on their area of responsibility in, in those ways. So, um, yeah, so, so, so it's really just being able to deal with customers and being able to take care of them. And, and in that sense, the customer does come first. The, 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 the client or, the, in this case, the citizen of, of Trinity County would, would, be an, would be the customer, would be an important customer. And it's someone particularly an elected office, which this would be. I mean, I know I'm initially it's appointed, but if I wanted to run for re-election, I assume that you'd want to stay in good public stead with folks that would, um, that would want to vote the yes lever. So, yeah, so that's, I hope that. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Or follow up on that. So you explain your kind of, your personal vision, but how would you, for, how would you relay that onto your staff? What, what training, what, how would you move that forward through the department? I, I guess what I would want to first be able to do is to, to see how the staff does operate. Uh, at, you know, how do they deal with the clients who come in between 12, uh, 10 and 1 and you know, uh, you know, work at the counter and what kinds of issues are they having in order to be able to be um, uh, prescriptive as far as giving a, a, an answer to your question. I don't know that I would have the knowledge from day one to say, oh, here comes Patrick, he's got all the answers, without first understanding what they are doing or how they are doing things, either right or wrong for that matter. Um, and, and a lot of that comes through observation and, and being in the role of being able to see where the problems are at that point. It, not, to evade your, not to evade your answer or to evade your question, but, um, uh, but I think first for me it would require you know, fully observing and understanding you know, what the underlying issues are or if I do see a problem, then being able to uh, take that person aside and, and say, you know, how could this be done differently, or you know, what are some other solutions in dealing with the customer, and then hopefully be able to come up with a set of guidelines or 
procedures that, that people follow or that you know people in the office follow and what is a prior you know what what is a priority um, is a person walk into the counter are they do they take priority over someone on the telephone um, that, that can sometimes be an issue oh, excuse me I gotta I gotta take this call and you may have to take the call um, and I'm not saying that one's right or one's wrong but if the person's taking the time to come down to the office you have to give that some some benefit too in the sense that they're in your face they're there they've taken the time to come down they have a concern they have an issue uh, and, and so there has to be some thought put into whether you sit back there on the phone and just ignore them for 10 minutes um, and deal with your phone call versus dealing with the customer that's in your face so 